Today we're looking at Math Lesson 13.5, Express Whole Numbers as Fractions. Our ICANN statement is draw visual models to show how to write fractions that name whole numbers. On the Spark Your Learning, Mrs. Snow's class has eight bags of flour. Each bag weighs one-fourth pound. Show how many one-pound sacks of flour the class can fill. Now we know the denominator or the bottom number in the fraction is how many pieces there are in our whole. So we're going to draw a rectangle and we're going to divide it into four parts because the denominator on our fraction is four. So we're going to divide it in half and half again in each of those halves. So we know that this is one fourth, this is one fourth, this is one fourth, and this, whoops, this is one fourth. Now, one fourth equals, if we add these together, we would have one fourth, Then this one would make two fourths. This one would make three fourths. And this one would make four fourths. And when we have, remember our denominator tells us that there are four parts in what we're working with in a whole. And we have those four parts. So four fourths is equal to one. Four fourths is equal to one whole. So four one-fourth bags will fill one one-pound bag. And we've used four of their eight bags. So we need to draw another, divide it into four, four parts. And again, we have the one-fourth parts. And together, that equals four-fourths, which equals one whole pound bag. And one pound plus one pound makes two pound bags. Okay, so remember the bottom always tells how many parts and then the top tells how many of those parts you have. So together her class can make two one pound bags of flour. Go on to page 370, the build your understanding. Tristan makes circular pans of cornbread and cuts them into thirds. How can you show one pan of Kristen's cornbread cut into thirds? So we have circular, so we're going to start with a circle. And then we're going to divide it into thirds. Now I think thirds are a little hard. Sometimes I draw a line straight down as if I were going all the way up and down the circle. And then you make kind of a Y. And I know that you're drawing them and they won't be perfect. And then, um, and it says that she has two pans. So let's go ahead and make two pans. And then we're going to, again, divide this into a third. You're going to make kind of a giant Y. So each one of these is one third of a pan. So we're going to talk about how many thirds do we have all together? How many thirds are in two pans? Well, there's one, two, three in that plan, and then three in this pan, and three plus three makes six thirds. Now this looks a little different because our fraction is larger on the top. So let's go back and try that again. We've got ahead of ourselves. So we have six thirds. OK. 
Okay, how can you write this as a fraction? Well, we have six parts of three because each pan is three parts. What whole number does this fraction equal? Well, if I were to have um, my fraction strips and this was one whole, and I would have three thirds there and three thirds here, I would have one whole two whole so six thirds is equal to two or you can think of this as a division sign you can think of the fraction line in your problem as a division sign and that's something that you need to remember because as you get older that's how they'll want you to think of it and you can say to yourself how many threes are in six and you should be able to count by threes, three, six, or just know that two times three is six. And so you can look at that in a lot of different ways. But two. So the whole number equals the two circular pans that she started with. How can you name the points located on the number line using fractions and whole numbers? So we see they've divided this fraction, this uh, number line, and they have one, a 0, 1, what would come next? A 2, and then a 3. And then they have lines in the middle of those representing one half of that length of the line. One half of from here to here, or here to here, or here to here. So if I have one half, and then my fraction would be 2, over 2 because it takes 1 2 to make 2 so 2 will divide into 2 one time okay and then I would have um, 3 halves this would be 3 halves then I would have 4 halves how many 2's in 4 or we could count our halves if you want 1 2 3 4 how many twos in four? Two. That's where we're getting this whole number. And then this one would be five halves. And then six halves. And how many twos in six? Three. That gives us our whole number. If I'm counting by twos, I could say two, four, six. There I am, and I use two threes. How many equal links are there from 0 to 1? So on this number line, they're saying, how many equal links are there? Let's change color. How many equal links are there from 0 to 1? Well, there's this length and this length. So there are two equal links. Okay, if you need to stop your recording and go give yourself time to write, please do that anytime during the recording. What whole number and fraction represents four equal links? Well, let's look at that. We did one, two, three, four equal links. What did we end up at? So we're at two for our whole number and the fraction would be four halves. What whole number and fraction represents six equal lengths? So that's down here at the bottom. You have our six equal halves. So the whole number is three, and the fraction is six over two. Six in the numerator and two in the denominator. If we divide that, how many twos in six? Two, four, six. Okay, let's turn our page and go on to page 371. Here's the situation. Tim uses four tortilla halves to make tortilla chips. Rita uses nine thirds to make her tortilla chips. How many tortillas do they each use? So Tim uses four tortilla halves to make his chips. So let's draw Tim's tortilla chips or 
So he uses two halves. So we better have two holes here. I'm sorry, I think he used four halves. We're going to cut these in half. So we'd have one half, one half, one half, and one half. And this is Tim. Okay. Rita uses nine thirds. So let's make some thirds. There's one whole tortilla. And remember I told you you could um, divide it by drawing a line about halfway up and then make kind of a big Y. So he has one third, one third, and one third. That makes three thirds. Okay, so we know we have three thirds. She needs nine chips. Each one of the thirds stands for a chip. So let's make another circle. And how many thirds are we going to have in this circle? One third, one third, and one third, leaving three thirds again. Let's make this three a little better. Okay, so three plus three is six thirds now. So are we to nine yet? Nope, so we're going to have to draw another one. Let's divide it into thirds. One third, one third, and one third. And we have three more thirds. So we have three thirds plus three plus three. So now we have nine thirds. And remember, her, each of her chips is a third of a tortilla shell. So what fraction represents Tim chips and Rita's chips? Well, how many chips did we have here for Tim? We had one half plus one half plus one half plus one half. So one, two, three, four. He had four halves. How many holes did he have? You can look up at your circles. How many circles did we draw? Or you can say how many twos in four. So he had two whole tortillas it took him to make his chips. Rita had nine thirds. And how many circles did Rita use? Well, she used three. Or you could say that three, six, nine. There are three threes in nine. So Rita used three whole tortilla chips. How many whole tortilla chips do they use? And they want you to put this in words. So we're going to do some typing here. Tim uses, whoops, Tim, Tim uses two whole tortillas. Rita uses three whole tortillas. Okay, let's go on to, down at the bottom is your check your understanding. I want you to stop your recording and do this. And then I want you to come back and check. And you need to draw a picture for me. So stop your recording. Okay, now that you've come back, it says each circle has one whole, write a whole number and a fraction for the parts. So the first thing we have to do is count the parts in each circle. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six parts. So there are six, six in that one. One, two, three, four, five, six. There are six, six in this one. And six plus six is 12, 6. Now we've got to say, how many holes did we have? We can look at the circles. We have two whole circles, or we can say that there 6 goes into 12 two times. Go ahead and turn your paper over and try to do the on your own number 2, and then come back.